Uh, we're going to start now. Good evening, everyone. This is what I call dedication. There is no parking around here. It is cold outside. Pretty nasty little rain going on. And you probably can be home eating dinner, right? But yet you chose to be here. So I want to thank you so much for your commitment, your dedication for coming out tonight uh, to start the discussion for what we believe will be a very ex exciting time for Philadelphia and Philadelphia neighborhoods. Uh, before we start, uh, I'd like to uh, recognize and uh, at some point during the course of the conversation, the members will come up on the stage, uh, my good friends and colleagues, uh, Councilman Jones, Councilwoman Blackwell, Councilwoman Tasco, uh, Councilwoman Blano Reynolds-Brown, and always need the state in the house, uh, my good friend, State Representative Sherelle Parker. Yeah. I uh, want to thank them so much, um, not necessarily for being here tonight, uh, although I do do that, but I want to thank them for all the work that they put in. Um, this is a, a collaborative effort uh, by the City Council of Philadelphia, and I'll briefly explain how we got here, and then we'll get into the subject matter, uh, Mr. Wetzel, and well, who's, who's from Ira? You, 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 you're going to Ira? Um, basically about a year and a half ago, uh, during our annual budget process, uh, there was some testimony from the administration and it was some quite exciting testimony. It referenced the fact that for the first time the city of Philadelphia experienced growth in its population. And I think the number is approximately 22,000 net. And we obviously were all excited about that. But as we got deeper into the conversation uh, and the question came up about where the growth was as related to um, that population increase, that primarily it was in Center City and what's called the perimeter neighborhoods around Center City, uh, University City, uh, Fishtown, Northern Liberties, uh, parts of the neighborhoods, neighbor southern parts of the Center City area, basically what we call the collar, counter, collar neighborhoods. And that was quite exciting, but the simple reality, what we also realized and the council members can attest to that, about two and a half years ago, during the redistricting process, we realized that a lot of neighborhoods in our various council districts lost significant population, which caused us to get into a very, very uh, challenging redistricting process, because we literally had to shift districts and shift uh, neighborhoods and, and representation around. Like I now, I represent a part of uh, the North Philadelphia community that John Street used to represent when he was a council person because of the population shifts. Councilman Jones, he's now a little deeper into North Philadelphia. Councilwoman Blackwell now went a little deeper into Southwest Councilwoman. Councilman Tasco, she jumped, it's, it's crazy. All right, bottom line. <laughs> Councilwoman Brown, she gets the luxury of representing everybody because she's a council person at large. And I do actually believe uh, Councilwoman Parker, um, I'm sorry, slip. State Representative Parker, that was not intentional. I know they say, hey, goes, right? Um, <laughs> uh, Representative Parker actually experienced a significant shift in her legislative district. So the bottom line, all that happened as a result of significant population shifts. And what we found that those neighborhoods that were traditionally known as neighborhoods of choice, the Winfields, the Alneys, uh, the East Oak Lanes, those neighborhoods that in years past, people couldn't wait to move into those communities lost a significant amount of population. And we started talking about that combined with the fact that um, there is population growth in certain neighborhoods. And we said, well, what's the game plan for those neighborhoods in the budget hearing? So bottom line, the response was there's not really a game plan for one stabilizing and stemming the tide of population decline and other types of decline in those neighborhoods. And we don't really have a strategy as to how we're going to grow those neighborhoods. So what the council members did, we got together and we started talking about a process that will put us in a better position to understand what we need to do as legislators uh, as it relates to our legislative initiatives and as it relates to our budgetary process because our budget process in large ways determines how we prioritize the spending as it relates to the city. And from a legislative perspective, it puts in place laws that allows us to govern in a way that help neighborhoods. So we put, this, we, we put our heads together and we said we're going to go out and hire 
a couple of consultants. Uh, we went out and hired the Reinvestment Fund, which is a great consultant that's done a lot of work across the country, and eConsult that did a significant amount of work across the country. And we asked them to come in and help us develop a strategy, uh, one data-driven and the other with statistics that reflect the existing um, opportunities and where we need to go. So as a result of that, uh, we put together, and I got to say, it's still in draft form, but it's in late draft form because the one thing we did realize is that we cannot put together a document, a tool, and at the end of the day, a plan without the participation of all of you. So starting out tonight, and I think we actually did one dry run in one of the other neighborhoods, we're going to be going out in the communities across the city. Council members will be hosting meetings to talk to those residents about their perspective on their neighborhoods so as we make those decisions and we come up with a plan for our communities across the city it will be based on the data but it will also be based on the input from the uh, residents and the stakeholders like yourself so with that i would like to thank you very much and welcome you uh, for coming in to have a what we believe to be a very very um, interesting and fruitful conversation during the course of the night and after we do the presentation, the members, will, the members will come up to the table to answer questions. Um, they told us we can't sit up there because our heads will be in the way of the presentation. So that's, not, that's why we're not up there right now. So first, I'd like to introduce Herbert Wetzel. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have Herb on the staff of City Council. Herb is a uh, former uh, executive director of the Redevelopment Authority, and he's been extremely helpful uh, to us as we move forward on a number of initiatives. Herb Wetzel. I'd like to reiterate what the council president said. Thank you so much for coming out on a cold, damp winter, not quite yet, fall evening. Uh, and as usual, the council president is so well informed, he's covered about 60% of what I was going to talk about, but I'll proceed anyway. About 18 months ago, as he often does, the council president came up to the fifth floor, and that's where council technical staff is located. And he sat down with us and he said, I want to set a goal, a long-term goal. I know we can't reach it right away. Every neighborhood, a community of choice. So after a lengthy discussion with the council president, he tasked us to think through and recommend how to create a strategic framework to guide the work of city council to achieve that goal, to make every neighborhood a community of choice. So what we did, we started by asking ourselves, what do we mean by community of choice? And we concluded that at the most basic level, we mean safe, stable, sustainable neighborhoods where the quality of life is such that current residents or those who are thinking of moving in Philadelphia would choose to live there. We understand and appreciate that quality of life is a measure that means different things to different people at different stages of their life. But we also understand there are universal elements that when they're present, they create places where people want to live, work, and raise their children. We also know people aspire to live in those places where those elements exist in abundance. And if they can, and that's important because not everyone can, they move away from places where these elements are in short supply. So working as a team, we identified what we believe were 12 basic elements that would, you would find in a community of choice and we gave each element a short definition, and I'll give you some examples. Housing, a range of housing that is both affordable to people of diverse economic profiles, that is also high quality, energy efficient, and physically and financially viable over the long run. Or education, access to high quality educational opportunities, including early childhood education with high performing neighborhood elementary schools as community anchors. And we took each one of these elements and gave that kind of definition to it, and then we reviewed these elements with the council president and recommended that we engage outside technical expertise to move this from a concept to a workable tool with 21st century technology. As the council president indicated, we hired two really leading firms here in Philadelphia, the Reinvestment Fund and eConsult Solutions, and we requested them to take a look at the elements that, that we created to ensure that those elements that we identified are the right elements 
that truly measure the quality of life and are the kind of elements that you would want to op have to operationalize a community of choice. We ask them to determine what data sets are needed and what data sets are available to measure the level of each of these elements in each neighborhood. The third thing was to gather that data necessary and finally to geocode that data to produce maps for each element showing its level in each neighborhood of our city. So what you're going to see tonight is I call CSI, Community Sustainability Initiative, version 1.0. 1.0 because this is just the beginning. CSI will be engaging and iterative, thereby allowing various voices over time to contribute to its growth and development. It combines data with 21st century technology to provide city council and our citizens with information they need to make informed decisions to create programs and policies that will move our city forward so that someday every neighborhood will be a community of choice. So I'm going to ask Ira to come up and demonstrate and show to you the tool that's been created. Well, the first part of this went well. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name's, good evening. My name's Ira Goldstein, and I am from an organization called the Reinvestment Fund, located here in the city of Philadelphia. I'm speaking really tonight on behalf of both a team of folks at the Reinvestment Fund and another organization, which you'll hear from later on, eConsult Corporation. Um, we were, as, as Herb and Council President Clark said, we were asked to help think through the process of measuring the quality of life across the neighborhoods of the city of Philadelphia. And to try and do it in a way that was objective and transparent, and to try and do it in a way that reflected as much as we could the conditions that existed on the ground at a, at, at a moment in time, and then as those conditions changed to be able to reflect those changes. As is always the case when you try and do things with data, it's never perfect. And part of what we're trying to accomplish tonight is to lay some of this stuff out for you and get your feedback as to the extent to which it's representing what your experiences are in different parts of the city and what additional kinds of information you might, might like to see as this thing evolves. So with that, let me begin. Um, TRF, the Reinvestment Fund, we're a Philadelphia-based nonprofit community development financial institution, or CDFI. You can think of us as a lending institution with a public purpose. What we do is we lend money to make places better, um, and that is our ultimate objective. And we do that by financing affordable housing and daycare centers and charter schools and all kinds of things that neighborhoods need to be vital and, and good places to be. Um, and so it is kind of a natural that we would want to be involved in something like this because what we're trying to do is to figure out a way to make places equitably good not just equitable, but equitably good. And so um, the city approached us to do this. And um, as Herb laid out and as the council president laid out, the idea was let's try and figure out a way of understanding the conditions so that we could ultimately make every neighborhood across the city of Philadelphia a neighborhood of choice. Um, and ultimately, the idea would be to, to get the database um, and uh, to, to gather the data and analyze it in such a way so that the council members, the staffs of the council members, and ultimately the public could look at things as they're proposed, um, could look at, um, generate ideas locally and see how they play out on the ground and understand the extent to which they are viable, necessary things to be able to, again, equitably improve the quality of life across the city of Philadelphia. So I've used the word equitably a few times. The idea here is ultimately let's think equitable, but let's think realistic as well. Um, there are parts of the city where um, you know, there's everything that anybody could imagine. It's the um, most advantageous place along every single dimension. And there are places where there are issues, right? There's no doubt about it. I'm a resident. You're all residents of the city of Philadelphia. And there are places that are kind of mixed. The idea was essentially, let's try and figure out what is that sort of that 
big, strong middle strata of the city of Philadelphia and use that as the benchmark. Let's try and say, whatever exists in that place, that's what every part of the city of Philadelphia ought to have at least. So if everybody has a certain level of access to amenities, a certain level of access to schools, a certain level of access to, um, to public safety and the like, that's what everything ought to have a, at least, right? Um, so what we did is we tried to work with an objective standard. The map that you're seeing there, a little bit washed out, is a map that characterizes the housing markets of the city of Philadelphia. And in very shorthand, and you know, if anybody wants to talk in greater detail later about how we do this, in very shorthand, the areas in Philadelphia that have a code in that yellow and blue range are the parts of the city of Philadelphia that make out that pretty strong middle. And our idea was, let's take each of our measures of quality of life, figure out what those yellow and blue areas have, and set that as the basic standard. Um, those three, those areas that I talked about, the yellow and blue areas on the map, those are places where the home prices, if you were to think about buying a home, they sell in and around the average for the city of Philadelphia, maybe a little bit above. There are places where there actually has been, over the last few years, um, a, a decent amount of new construction and building permitting activity, reflecting the fact that people have faith in their neighborhoods and want to invest in their homes, that it's going to be a stable, worthwhile investment. There are very low vacancy rates, the home ownership rates are high, and these are places where, in the main, if you think about the homes that sell, they tend to be selling in and around the same price. In other words, the housing market is pretty uniform within those areas, okay? So that becomes the standard, those yellows and blues, and then for each of the quality of life measures that we talk about, we'll see them benchmarked against those areas. Um, what I'd like to do now is to hop ahead and talk about the tool itself. Um, we'll show you a few slides and then we'll go in and, and we'll see, we're gonna try and work it live. Hopefully it all works for us. The tool, as the council president said, is really, I think uh, he called it uh, version 1.0, I call it in a beta stage, the same thing. In other words, we feel that it's good enough to get it out to show people and to get reactions from people as to whether or not the content is correct and the functionality is correct and that what it reflects is correct as you understand the different parts of your city. Um, but the idea is we think it's there, but we don't think it's all the way there. And over the course of time, we're gonna take in the feedback that we get from this forum and other forums around the city and try and make it a better thing and um, a, both a better tool and a more transparent tool. You'll see that we have a certain set of, of quality of life indicators. They are by no means um, a comprehensive list. We anticipate fully that coming out of these meetings that we'll learn that we, be, we ought to be measuring some additional things. Um, but the things that we're looking at now, by the way, are things that residents and elected officials and experts in the field are measuring when they go into this science of measuring quality of life. But we do, as I said, we do anticipate there will be more. In terms of what we use to measure them, you sort of have to adjust your way of thinking to, um, to take into the notion that what we're trying to measure is a concept. And it's hard to directly measure that concept, but what we have is things that we actually can measure that we think when taken together reflect that concept. And so the goal is ultimately to have the, the, the right complement of things that when we put them together, those measurable things reflect that concept. And that's what we're trying to do logically. We also have the added dimension of trying to figure out how to measure things in such a way that as the city changes on a regular and recurring basis, that the data changes. And so we're able to see when council uh, votes to invest in something with the idea of resolving a foreclosure crisis in a particular area or upgrading uh, 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 the rec centers in a particular area, that the data will reflect it. So they have to be granular enough that they can pick that up and they have to be temporally uh, sequenced quickly enough that you can see it. So these are things that have to maybe be reported out on a quarterly or on an annual basis at a minimum. And they have to be things that we can believe that we can measure on a consistent basis. 
So we have on the one hand, the desire to measure things perfectly with every possible measure that you could think of to say this concept. And then we have the reality of, you can never measure everything perfectly. And so that's what we're, we're trying to sort of make our way through that complex space. But that is ultimately what we're doing. It's got to be measurable. It's got to be measurable on a regular and recurring basis. And although it will never be perfect, we want to keep improving it to make sure that we are ultimately getting to the concept, be it access to a high quality education or public safety or what have you. So uh, in a moment, you'll see the tool. Um, the basic features and functions of the tool are that it's fully functional. It's fully, excuse me, of course it's functional. It's fully searchable. Um, so you can put in an address, you can put in a, an, a, a zip code, a neighborhood, a council manic district, old definitions and new. You can put in school catchment areas and go straight to those places. Very quickly, the way if you went into Google Maps, you could do that. In addition, we wanted to be able to measure things at what's known as a census block group level. So that's pretty small. You're probably, you may be used to thinking about census tracts or zip codes. Think about it this way. In the city of Philadelphia, there are about 350 census tracts, as big as this city is. There's about 350 of them. There's about 65 zip codes, but there's about 1,400 block groups. So they're much smaller. And they're going to pick up that mosaic that you experience as you walk down Wadsworth Avenue from Cheltenham down to Germantown or wherever it is, you're going you're gonna to see things as you take that walk and you'll see it reflected in the data because it's small enough to see it. In addition, we show you some things at a, at a point or address level. So you want to know where is the rec center, where is the library, where is uh, you know, uh, uh, some other particular neighborhood asset or amenity. All, you know, those kinds of things are in there. And I, I started to say all because I know that they're not all in there, but we're working towards getting them in there. In addition, you'll get the ability to look at demographic information. So information from the census. We were chatting earlier this evening about, you know, could we know about household size? Could we know about household constellation? Are there children present? Is it just uh, two adults, one adult? What is the, what is the makeup? Well, um, there is some of that in there. And you know, at the end of our discussions, we'll figure out what else we need to add. But that stuff will be there. And you will be able to see it in tandem with those quality of life measures. And ultimately, we want you to be able to not only uh, see this stuff on a map, but get a little snapshot of a neighborhood. So for each of the neighborhoods of the city of Philadelphia, you'll see how it, how it, uh, um, how it stacks up on each of the different dimensions. Now, <clears throat> one thing I'd like to uh, point out is all the measurements are done at these little census block groups. And that's real important because I'm a lifelong Philadelphian. I could tell you in every neighborhood I lived in, however you define those neighborhood boundaries, it was not universally one thing. You go to one side of it, it looks one way, and you go to another side of it, it looks another. The block groups show you all that. So while you can do a neighborhood report, and as important as that is, you can actually look at the map and click on the map and figure out every single value for every little mosaic tile that makes up that block group. And that will help you if you're in the business of trying to work in your neighborhood or organize in your neighborhood or represent the neighborhood or what have you, to be able to understand that places are not universally one thing and to be able to get a little more tailored about what you're doing. So that's the introduction to the tool. Now we jump in the water, see what happens. Here we go. So far, so good. <clears throat> 